99 bottles of beer on the wall? You might be lucky to get one in this economy. A glass bottle shortage is now threatening to shortchange shoppers of their favorite bottle of brew. Here to discuss it is David Osgo, Senior Vice President of Economic and Strategic Analysis at the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States. David, thanks for joining here. And as I remarked during the break, kind of surprising, but also not surprising. We've seen the chip, we've seen the chip shortage, we've seen brisket shortages, uh, we've seen a lot of other shortages, but uh, can you break this one down for us? Well, certainly, Jared. Well, first off, thank you so much for, for having me here today. Uh, there is a bottle shortage here in the United States uh, when it comes to uh, getting products, uh, bottles to uh, distilled sp distillers. Uh, now, it's not really just a bottle shortage that's uh, threatening uh, uh, shoppers this coming Christmas, this holiday season. Uh, we're suffering, the spirits industry is really like uh, every other industry in the United States in that uh, we're facing issues with regard to getting containers into the U.S. Roughly 40% 40, 40 of everything you see on uh, your package store shelf uh, is imported. So uh, not only is there a shortage of bottles, but oftentimes we're faced with shortage of containers, uh, which in turn is really leading to, uh, to a certain extent, uh, a shortage of product on the shelf uh, th this holiday season. Well, I think the pandemic has showed that the old uh, supply chain uh, methods and structure is probably obsolete. Uh, things have definitely changed. But I'm wondering, how is your industry tackling uh, these problems here? Because other industries are reorienting, reorienting some of their supplies here. They're changing their ordering practices. But is that part of uh, the distilled spirits um, strategy as well? Uh, certainly. Well, some of our member companies uh, are large international companies that have very, very broad portfolios. Uh, while 40% of everything might be imported, that means 60% uh, is domestic products. So if you have a fairly broad portfolio, uh, what they've done is shifted their marketing plans to, uh, more toward those products that are made do domestically. Uh, you know, right now, there's probably more, uh, we're in a golden age of whiskey here in the United States. Uh, there's more good bourbon being made uh, in the U.S. than at any time uh, in, in the past. Uh, so right now, they're shifting their plans more and more toward those products that can be available. You know, you said golden age of whiskey, and my ears perk up a little bit. Can you, I, I just want to follow up on that, even if it doesn't have to do with the uh, glass bottle shortage here. Uh, in your industry, what kind of innovations are being made in uh, whiskey, bourbon whiskey right now? Uh, sure. Well, right now, uh, right off, you have over 2,000 craft distillers that are in the marketplace today, and some of them are really innovating with regard to how they're making bourbon, or actually rye whiskey, or for that matter, even American single malts, uh, effectively something similar to either Scotch or Irish whiskey, though it's certainly not Scotch or Irish whiskey. Uh, so with all those new players in the marketplace, uh, you're seeing a lot of innovation. You're seeing innovation with regard to what the mash bill is, i.e. the grains that go into the whiskey. Uh, additionally, you're seeing innovation in how they age it, the length of time they age it, or in what kind of barrels they're aging it in. Uh, so as a result, there's really more good whiskey on the marketplace. So yes, there is a, uh, there, to a certain extent, there is a logistics issue uh, for our industry. Uh, but if you're shopping for Christmas, uh, as I said, there's a lot of good whiskey out there. We market over 16,000 products. So uh, it pays to be a little bit creative uh, now. It pays to really uh, experiment a little bit. Well, maybe you can, I want to continue this line here. Uh, what other trends have you seen in the industry aside from whiskey? Um, and what trends may, may be going in the wrong direction here? What are consumers kind of eschewing? Uh, well, uh, actually, last year, we had our best year probably in 40 years. Our volumes increased by around 4%. Uh, revenues were up much higher because we saw the consumer really move to those premium and super premium products. Uh, so as a result, really all categories grew. Uh, but we are seeing a lot of strength first, obviously, in bourbon. We see a lot of strength in tequila. Uh, we see a lot of strength in cognac. And of course, we also always see a lot of uh, strength in, in single malt scotch. Uh, so those are some areas where we're seeing a lot of good growth. But by the same token, there are some very, very good high-end rums that are coming onto the market uh, uh, today, and as well as some uh, really premium gins as well. So 
there are really a lot of options for the consumer. Uh, even though we do face shortages, uh, particularly on some imports, uh, the consumer has a lot of options just because of the variety and the quality that's out on the market today.